Yo, what's going on, everybody? Hope everybody's out there safe. Hope everybody's out there doing well. In these times that we're living in, this is kind of unprecedented times. Um, but at the same time, God is still good. And um, hope everybody is, you know, making the best out of, you know, their tough situations. You know, we could be in a lot worse shape. Uh, we could be in a lot worse, you know, situation than others out there who are losing family members, who are losing loved ones um, to this epidemic. So I try to keep my head up, keep all my athletes and my clients head up, realizing, you know, it could be in a lot worse situation than we're in. So, like I said, hope everybody is doing well. Um, my son is eating every 45 minutes, so I don't really know how in the world that we are going to continue to do this. <laughs> I mean, he's literally eating. I'm like, you just ate an hour ago, bro. I don't even understand how you're even remotely hungry, but you know, they're going through their things too. So be patient with your kids. Um, they're having a you know, hard time, especially for the seniors and things like that this year. It's a difficult time period for everybody. Um, but especially, you know, they were looking at graduation. Uh, they're looking at so many other things that they have going on in their lives. Um, that, um, you know, it, it sucks, man. It sucks, but, you know, it's the situation we are in. It is what it is. Hey, good morning, uh, Steve. Hope all is well, bro. Um, good to see you on tonight. Um, so, like I said, let's just keep, you know, praying for each other, um, putting the correct information out there and um, just relying on each other and coming together as a nation is the most important thing. Um, so tonight, I kind of wanted to hop on this subject matter. Um, why are we not talking about uh, immune system health uh, during this COVID-19 crisis? Um, you know, that's kind of my issue. Um, I've heard so much things from, you know, wonder drugs. I've heard so many things from, um, you know, different things that are out there, um, you know, from the ventilators and the and the respirators that are having to utilize. Uh, there are just so many things um, going on right now. Uh, but no one is talking about immune system health um, during this pandemic. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. You know, um, during best practices, we try to keep just to the facts. Uh, we don't want to speculate. What's going on, Mr. Bass? How you doing, sir? Um, good to see you on tonight as well. Um, and we're just going to break down, you know, some things about immune system, some false, some truths, uh, some things that we're going to go out and, and kind of dispel some rumors that we've heard. I've kind of put some notes together for you guys um, to make sure that we have a good understanding, um, you know, and, and understand what's going on. So, you know, are there helpful ways to strengthen your immune system and fight off disease? That's the big question. Um, and how can you improve your immune system? Now, let's talk about it. On the whole, your immune system does a remarkable job of defending you against, you know, disease causing microorganisms. That's its job, right? You know, to prevent and try to defend when they come into your system, you know, those diseases causing that. Um, so one of those big things, you know, but sometimes it fails, right? Sometimes those germs, you know, invade us and it, that's what makes us sick. Um, and you know, that's what our immune system is for. Now question, is it possible to intervene in the process and boost your immune system? Um, and what do you do? You know, you know, what improvisions can you make for your diet and things like that? Now, do we take certain vitamins or herbal preparations? Um, do we make other lifestyle changes uh, in hope of producing a near perfect immune response? That's what we're looking at. And what can you do personally to uh, help your immune system and your family's immune system, especially uh, during this time of the COVID-19 pandemic? Now, the idea of boosting your immunity is enticing, right? It sounds good. What things, what vitamins, what supplements can I take to boost my immune system? But the ability to do so has provided elusive reasoning and rationale for years. There is not truly a 
a catch-all method to boosting your immune system. And we'll talk about that specifically in those uh, parameters. So the immune system is precisely that. It's not a, it's a system, right? It's not a single entity. And I think a lot of people don't understand that when they try to put things together. When you're trying to uh, boost your immune system, you have to understand it's a complete an entire system and it works well with your balance and it works well with harmony. So there is still so much research to be done. And when I was pulling up articles and journal articles in preparation for tonight's discussion, it talks about the intricacies and the interconnectedness of the immune system and how it responds to them, how it responds to different things. But for now, there is no scientifically proven fact that I could come up with that links between lifestyle and an enhanced immune function. But that doesn't mean that the effects of the lifestyle on the immune system aren't intriguing and shouldn't be studied. You know, researchers are now exploring the effects of diet. They are looking at exercise, age, physiological stress, and other factors on the immune response, both in animals and in humans. Now, in the meantime, you know, what our discussion will be tonight, generally healthy living strategies are a good way to start your immune system and giving it the upper hand. So what are some of the healthy ways to strengthen, not boost, but actually strengthen your immune system? It is your first line of defense and it's always a healthy lifestyle. So let's put all the dispel the myths and the rumors out there that following general good health guidelines is the single best step that you can take towards naturally keeping your immune system healthy and strong. Now, Every part of your body, including your immune system, functions better when protected from environmental assaults, right? Bolstered by healthy living strategies such as these. Now, number one, duh, don't smoke. Um, smoking definitely decreases your immune systems. You know, number two is another duh, eat a diet in high fruits and high vegetables that have those vitamins in there. Now you go to a, you know, uh, um, GNC, you go to a vitamin shop and you see rows and rows and rows and rows of vitamins and supplements. But the issue here is that if you eat a diet with high, high fruits and high, high vegetables, you automatically get those vitamins inside your system. So, also, we need to exercise regularly. That's huge as well. And we need to maintain a healthy weight. That is very important. Uh, we've um, from Dr. Fossey that's coming out and some other things that are coming out. People with pre-existing uh, conditions such as diabetes, um, such as uh, high blood pressure, um, obesity, those pre-existing conditions actually lower your immune system and you are more readily available to get the disease uh, or get the virus in terms of those. And that's any virus, not just the COVID-19, but um, the flu, cold, um, any type of those bacteria, viruses, you, when your immune system is suppressed because you're not exercising regularly, you're not maintaining a healthy weight, you're not eating a proper diet of high vegetables and high fruits, you really are more susceptible to having these diseases. This is scientifically proven. Also, one of those mitigating factors, uh, good evening, Ron, what's going on, brother? Um, one of those other mitigating factors, getting adequate sleep. Um, you know, that's between um, six to eight hours a night. Um, and if you can, you know, some people work a, a different schedule and a tough schedule, but getting at least six hours is going to be paramount to keeping your immune system bolstered very high. Um, it takes steps to avoiding infections, such as washing your hands, wash, wash, wash your hands. And I'm talking about, you know, just sometimes randomly, you know, hand sanitizer is good. Hand sanitizer does its job, but when it, at the same time, they can't substitute for washing your hands frequently and even actually cooking meats uh, thoroughly. So you also want to try to uh, minimize stress um, as well. It is very tough during these tough times. Um, you know, me and my wife, uh, Vanessa and I, we were talking and it goes to the, you know, you have to kind of mitigate your stress. You got to keep a routine. We talked specifically about this last uh, best practices where we spoke about the importance of 
going through a routine, getting up at your normal time, uh, you know, working out and training as you can, meal prepping, those things to minimize your stress. Because if you're just, and, and I understand that your stress, especially in the field that you work in, I completely understand. And that's why we're here to talk about it. But in order to minimize those things, please try to keep a schedule. Please try to, you know, make sure that you have um, all of your meals prepped because you have a tendency to snack less when your meals are uh, prepared. Um, and that's going to be a, a definite way to increase your immunity the healthy way. Now, there are many products on the stores. There's many products on the shelves that claim to boost or support immunity. But the concept, the concept of boosting immunity actually makes little sense scientifically. And everybody knows me, knows that I'm a science guy, I'm a math guy. And in fact, boosting the number of cells in your body, immune cells or others, is not necessarily a good thing. For example, right, let's give a good example. Um, an athlete who engages, you know, who we heard of blood doping before, uh, pumping blood into their system to boost their number of blood cells and enhance their performance, actually were finding themselves running the risk of a stroke. Uh, so attempting to boost the cells of your immune system is especially complicated, right? Because there are so many different kinds of cells in your immune system that respond to so many different type of microbes in so many different ways. So which cells should you boost and what to what number? So far from what I've saw and what I've read, scientists don't have an answer for that. And if they did, they would have a magic pill and we probably wouldn't be in such a situation that we're in right now. But what is known that is the body is continually generating immune cells on a daily basis. Certainly, it produces many more um, lymphocytes, you know, than it does that we can possibly use. The extra cells removes themselves through a natural process, a natural process of cell death called apoptosis. So before they see any action, so our, so you probably have won the battle, the, your immune system. So no one knows how many cells or what is the best mix of cells the immune system needs to function at the optimal level. Um, looked at several um, different scientific journals, different scholarly articles, and no one knew that the perfect mix. But there has been a correlation uh, between the immune system and age. As we age, our immune system is the response capability becomes reduced. That's scientifically proven, which in turn contributes to more infections and more cancer. So that's why initially when the uh, onslaught of COVID-19 came about, uh, it was just like, wow, they're, they're really kind of hitting old people, um, you know, or older or more elderly people really hard. And that is honestly because scientifically proven, our immune system response capability is dramatically reduced as we get older and it just contributes to more infections. Now, as life expectancy is developed, countries has increased, as ours has increased, so too has the incidence of age-related conditions. While some people age healthy, the conclusion of many studies is that compared with younger people, the elderly are more likely to contract infectious diseases and even more importantly, more likely to die from them as we've been seeing um, respiratory infections, influenza, um, the COVID-19 virus and things like that, or particularly pneumonia are a leading cause of death in people over 65, not just the United States, but I actually found this out and I did not know this. This is actually worldwide. So no one knows for sure why this happens. Um, Try to look at some studies to do some correlation and some linear regression to see over time what has been going on over the past 20 or 30 years. Um, but some scientists observe that this increased risk correlates uh, with a decrease in T cells. That's what basically um, I found on a consistent level, possibly from the thymus and with age and producing fewer T cells to fight off infection. Now, whether this disease is thymus function explains the drop in T cells, uh, whether or changes play role, it hasn't, is not understood. And I didn't get a correlation uh, to put that together. So that's still kind of on the table of what that actually is. Now, others are interested in whether the bone marrow becomes less efficient at producing the stem cells that give rise to the cells of the immune system, right? So a reduction in immune response to infections has been demonstrated by older people's response to vaccines. Now, for example, studies of influenza vaccines have shown that 
For people over age 65, the vaccine less effective compared to healthy children over age two. But despite the reduction in efficiency, vaccinations for influenza have significantly lowered the rates of sickness and death in older people when compared to people who have non-vaccinations. So that's not trying to tell you either way or if you're a vaccination or non-vaccination. These are just the facts. So I'll read that again. It says the vaccinations for influenza have significantly lowered the rates of sickness and death in older people when compared with no vaccination. Those are the facts. There appears to be a connection between nutrition and immunity in the elderly. These are some of the studies that I found, and I found actually four um, studies that actually looked at this were a form of malnutrition that is surprisingly common even in affluent countries such as our own is known as macronutrient malnutrition. And again, that's macronutrient malnutrition. Let's all put our student hats on and kind of understand what this means from a very, very simple level. Macronutrient malnutrition in which a person is deficient in some essential vitamins and trace minerals that are obtained from a supplement uh, supplemented by a diet can happen in the elderly. Now, specifically, older people tend to eat less and often have less variety in their diets. Uh, one more important question is whether dietary supplements, what we buy at GNC and what we buy at Nutrition Corner, may help older people maintain a healthier immune system. You know, for people who are taking care of their parents or, you know, their parents are getting older or if you are a little older yourself, um, you know, the, our older seasoned um, members of society should discuss their questions, this question with their doctor. Like any fighting force, the immune system army marches on in the stomach. Um, and that's why gut health is very important. That's why uh, taking probiotics is very important. Uh, healthy immune system warriors need good, regular nourishment. And as we get older, we don't tend to get that. And what we find out is what we said before, which is called macronutrient malnutrition, which is simply as you get older, you are not. And even now there are some people in their thirties and forties who are, have macronutrient malnutrition because they are not getting those essential vitamins that they need and trace minerals that are obtained from supplementing their things in their diet. So that's going to be very important. Excuse me. So a healthy immune system warriors, uh, you know, you got to have good nutrition. You got to have good health. And science has, you know, scientists have actually recognized that people who live in poverty and are malnourished, uh, malnourished are more vulnerable to infectious diseases. So that means that the lower your immune system is because you don't have the proper uh, macronutrients or you're malnutrition deficient. Um, you have a higher chance of getting an infectious disease. So it's not necessarily boosting your immune system. That's why what we're talking about tonight, we're actually saying what is going to be the thing to strengthen your immune system so it can work for itself and then do everything that it needs to do because it's a very, very complex system. But at the same time, there's many things that we can do as we talked about earlier and we'll wrap up again tonight with our immune system to strengthen it, not necessarily boost it. So there are also relatively few studies on the effects of nutrition on the actual immune system of humans as well. A lot of lab uh, rats have been utilized, uh, but there hasn't been a, a great deal of data and scientists are still studying. Uh, what we did find uh, when looking in the past couple of days, there's some evidence that various macronutrient deficiencies, for example, deficiencies in zinc, Iron, uh, copper, folic acid, and vitamins um, A, B6, C, and E alter immune responses in animals as measured in the test tube. There hasn't been a lot of data to show any conclusive evidence in human immune systems. So all most of the supplements you see have been done and, and tested on in a lab. And that laboratory is, you know, usually, you know, mice or rats. And they test it there. But there hasn't been a lot of human studies uh, testing this. So that's kind of something important to realize uh, that, you know, the correlation is there, you know, for uh, things, deficiencies in zinc, iron, folic acid, copper, vitamins, 
A, B6, C, and E, um, they do alter immune responses in animals, which could lead to them altering it in humans. But as of right now, it's measured in that test tube. However, the impact the impact, the impact of these immune system changes on the health of animals is less clear. And the effects of similar deficiencies on humans' uh, response has not been assessed yet. So the important question here is, what can we do? If you suspect, if you suspect your diet, not providing you with all the essential macronutrient needs, maybe for instance, you don't like vegetables. Uh, you know, I have some clients and some athletes. Coach, I cannot do vegetables. I cannot, I don't like fruit. You know what I mean? And there are people who will do that, and that's their prerogative. Taking a daily multivitamin and mineral supplement may help offset and give you some health benefits. Of course, we always want to get our things naturally from, you know, uh, vegetables, from fruits, uh, from that first form instead of anything processed, because at the end of the day, multivitamin is processed. If you're not getting enough vegetables or fruits to get those um, minerals and those vitamins into your system. So taking a daily multivitamin will help with that. And the mineral supplement along with other health benefits beyond any possible beneficial effects on the immune system. Um, so taking mega doses of say, one single vitamin does not have any correlation to building an immune system. I know they're like, load up on vitamin C, load up on vitamin C. There hasn't really been any um, unequivocal tests to show that vitamin C by itself boost your immune system. And as we say, we're going to get from that word. There's things that strengthen it. But if you actually have a deficiency before, then all you're doing is supplementing that deficiency by utilizing those vitamins or those multivitamins. But that's because you have a deficiency that the doctor may prescribe that to you. That extra dose or the mega doses of vitamin C doesn't have any scientific effect of building your immune system. So more is not necessarily better. Now, improving your immunity with herbs and supplements, you walk into a store, you walk into GNC, you walk into, um, you know, a vitamin shop, and you will find bottles and bottles and bottles of pills and herbal preparations claiming to support uh, immune health or otherwise boost the health of your immune system. You know, although some preparations have found to alter some components of immune function, Thus far, let me be clear, thus far there is no evidence that they actually bolster immunity to the point where you are better protected against infectious, dis infectious diseases. That's, that's it. So if you don't get anything out of this tonight, just know that those rows and rows and rows of vitamins are from the supplement company. And most of those vitamins have not been FDA tested. Um, there's a supplement coming that's putting them out there and they necessarily have not even been tested. So that vitamin A, B, C, and you know, all the, the gambit of it that you're getting of, if you're getting enough uh, through your fruits or your vegetables, there's absolutely no reason to take it. And even increased mega doses can have an altering effect on your body because your body is like, why are you giving me more than I need? And it's going to secrete it as waste and go through your bloodstream, which it doesn't even have to if you're getting enough. So if you're taking several different types of, uh, you know, vitamins. And I know one time one of my athletes came to me and they were just taking a list. And I was like, why don't we supplement this with a diet and get rid of all the stuff that is actually being processed? They find themselves, you know, better able, better gut health, uh, better stomach health overall. And we were just able to kind of take all of those unnecessary processed vitamins and use the actually utilize the, the ones that work. So scientists don't, no, for example, whether an herb, you know, specifically raises the antibodies, uh, there hasn't been any uh, conclusive evidence there, and the blood is actually doing any beneficial for the overall immunity. Um, and stress and immune function. Modern medicine has come to appreciate, you know, the closely linked relationship to the mind and body, um, you know, including, you know, upstack stomach. Hives, even heart disease are linked to the effects of emotional stress. So emotional stress is very going to be very, very important. And that's what, you know, and I understand that you said that you were stressed and that's what we have to keep down. But despite the challenges, scientists are actively studying the relationship between stress and immune function because we know that an increased amount of stress lowers your immune immune function. And, you know, one of the final things is stress is difficult to define, right? 
Um, you know, whether you appear to be stressed um, situation, especially with everything that's going on right now um, in the world with COVID-19 and our lockdown. Um, when people are exposed to situations they regard as stressful, it's difficult for them to measure their stress level, right? And it's difficult for scientists to know subjectively the impression of stress and how it's accurate. But we there's a correlation that we do know that it will lower your immune system at that stress level. Um, and, and, and that's the big thing. But researchers remain interested in the question um, in different populations. So um, going back to everything that we're talking about, and, and the last thing I need to say is actually before is exercise. Is it good or bad for immunity? Regular exercise is one of the pillars of, of healthy living. It improves your cardiovascular health, lowers your blood pressure, helps keep control under your body weight, protects from a variety of diseases, um, but it does help to boost your immune system naturally. And that's what we want to look at doing things naturally. Just like a healthy diet, exercise can contribute to general good health and therefore to the healthy uh, the health of your immune system. It may contribute even more directly by promoting good circulation of that blood, which allows the cells and substances of the immune to move through, excuse me, through the body freely and do their job efficiently. So that is probably the most important thing is doing things naturally. So kind of putting everything together to get, you know, the big points or the major points out of our discussion tonight, that there is no scientific evidence that vitamins and all these other things, specific vitamins um, boost your immune system, right? If you have a deficiency that you talk with your doctor, that's completely understandable where you need to take those vitamins in order to supplement because you're not getting them another way. That's fine. But for them to, you know, put on their label, that's false advertisement, helps bolster your immune system. Your immune system is so complex that one vitamin is not going to go into your commune, immune system and change around everything like vitamin C just to boost your immune system. Uh, let me get that question. Does a hard workout weaken your immune system in the short term to strengthen it in the long term? I have not, Rick, seen any um, scientific data to say that a workout weakens your immune system. Um, I would say that that would be something I would need to research before I speak on. But I have not heard that knowing that the oxidation levels in your blood uh, circulate better and it moves those... Um, trace minerals and any other thing that is needs to be moved out in the form of waste out of your body, especially when your blood flows, then we need to kind of specifically be careful there uh, to say it would weaken your immune system. I just wouldn't understand how, especially when it has, you know, from looking at your VO2, looking at your oxygen levels and looking at the way your blood is able to move through your system at a higher level and, you know, get more waste out of your system at that time of you exercising from an elevated heart rate. So um, that's something that I'll look up after this, but I have not heard that a hard workout would weaken your immune system. And, you know, to close out, and I'll turn over, you know, to any questions. Um, the big things of cells is, you know, is bolstering that blood by getting that good uh, exercise, getting the proper diet. Um, the proper diet is going to be huge. And then I think in order during this time frame of COVID-19, ensuring that you keep your schedule will help the stress levels as much as you can. Also, too, if you're working from home um, on the hour, the last 10 minutes, get up. Walk around, go up and down the steps. If you don't got steps, you know, walk, just walk around the house because blood flow and circulation is going to be very, very important. We are used to moving a lot more. So we've had to alter workouts. I've altered workouts for all of my clients and athletes um, in order for them to try to get through this time period because actually to be transparent, we don't know when this is going to end. So the last thing that we want to do is get out of a routine to the point of where we're not doing any exercise. We're, you know, eating and snacking, you know, on foods that aren't healthy for us and then not getting enough sleep. We're staying up, you know, we're on our phones or watching TV. Um, and then what that does is all of those things with a culmination of a virus going on lowers our immune system and then we are more susceptible to the disease. So we want to make sure that we keep our stress under control, that we're properly getting our fruits and vegetables in and our diet and that we're exercising and keeping active as much as we can. It sucks right now, but we could be definitely in a worse situation. There's so many uh, people who have lost, you know, close family members um, and loved ones and friends during this time period. So, you know, it would be, uh, you know, remiss for me to say that, you know, it is not, you know, a difficult time for everybody, you know, out here. But, you know, at the end of the day, 
you know, if you have your health, uh, you know, health is wealth at the end of the day. So I just want to make sure that everybody continues to take care of themselves. Um, please keep these questions coming. Uh, Rick, uh, great topic tonight of things to, to boost your immune system. And, you know, lastly, you know, before anything else, you know, doing simple things that help, um, you know, like not smoking, um, eating, you know, uh, diet with high fruits and vegetables, exercising regularly, maintaining a healthy weight. Um, if you got to drink alcohol, do it, please. So in moderation and moderation is going to be very key. Um, get adequate sleep um, and taking steps to avoid infection, like washing your hands, um, cooking your meats thoroughly, and just continue to try to minimize your stress during a very stressful time period. As once again, always, you guys are, you know, fabulous. Um, I really appreciate the love and support um, you guys continue to show uh, for best practices. Um, my company and I are, are just very thankful for you guys. Um, always, you know, sending in questions, keeping me on my toes and learning, um, you know, these simple things about nutrition um, and that I can explain to you. It just helps keeps me digging in the books as well and keeps me reading. So thank you once again. Uh, once always, I always want to be respectful um, of everybody's time. Please also leave comments um, and questions that you have down in the comments area. I will get to those, read them, go through them, um, and make sure that I answer them and get back with you. And Rick, I will actually look up your question as well uh, to make sure um, the immune system far as it is it compromised when you exercise. Like I said, have not heard that. Uh, Miss Ann, I am praying for you. Please, please, please try to keep that stress down. I know the field that you work in, but um, you know, please try to keep a routine, keep your schedule, meal prep when you can, um, you know, limit the snacking and try to get as much rest as you can uh, during this time period. Much love to everybody. Uh, salute out there. Stay safe and God bless. And we will be, uh, be talking and coming back soon. Peace.